Hello, it's Zach with a, another Beast Morpher review uh, here uh, on the Podcast Name Tim YouTube channel. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot with promoting this video and all the other videos. This week we're going to be discussing Gorilla Art, which is episode 16 of season 1, again, of Power Rangers Beast Morphers. So let's get right into it. We're going to review the episode and then at the end, as always, give our Monster of the, of the Week review and rating on our uh, five-point system, or excuse me, 25-point system, five categories. Uh, explain that a little bit more later for Turbotron. So um, Ravi is, um, it's another Ravi-heavy episode, which I like, uh, because Digital Deception earlier in the year was uh, one of my favorite episodes of Beast Morphers, and that was a very Ravi character-focused episode. So um, he's, he's going into the lab late at night to um, do some painting. He's hiding his artwork from his mom because He's uh, sure she'll flip out, say that's a waste of time, and he's actually talking to and painting the uh, the rocks, the Roxy that's been you know uh, put in the stasis pod. So, and, uh, again, whenever we're focused on Roxy, it seems like we're really focusing on that that dynamic between the two of them, which is one of that what I think is one of the strongest things of the entire series is is their dynamic, and uh, and will continue to be as we move forward. Um, Smash ends up walking in, and uh, Ravi panics a little bit. He ends up uh, kind of rebooting him and resetting his memories. Uh, unfortunately, when he does this, uh, Smash picks up a little bit of a quirk, a little glitch in the system, if you will, and uh, he now has the desire and urge to paint. Uh, he's actually found the next day by Ben and Betty out at a park painting a wall, and um, obviously B-Spots are not supposed to We find out B-Spots aren't supposed to be out, uh, especially not without permission, and uh, obviously they're not supposed to be doing having these kind of unique characteristics. Uh, Turbotron and Roxy and Blaze end up showing up. No real deep, intricate plan this week. It's just we want to capture a B-spot, kind of straightforward to the point. Um, Turbotron uh, is trying to capture Smash as they're escaping, and uh, he, the other Rangers are dealing with um, everyone else, such so as Ravi and Smash that are dealing with, with this situation. Uh, Smash ends up blocking the wind. Turbotron kind of has like a, like a giant uh, fan in the middle of him, uh, of his body and so I'm assuming he was based on a fan originally we don't see that transition but um, he's blowing a lot of wind he's also sucking them into him uh, but uh, what's interesting is Ravi just takes two shots with uh, the Beast Blaster by himself no one else around and uh, defeats uh, Turbotron so uh, gonna take a hit later in the review or for the rating for, for him because of defeating by one Ranger Scrozzle ends up completing the upgrade. If you'll recall the last few episodes, they've been collecting data on the Power Rangers Beast Powers. Um, and they're going to use it to give it to one of the lieutenants, either Roxy or Blaze, to uh, make them super strong to be able to take on the Rangers. But another one has entered the fray, the fourth and final lieutenant of Evox, and that is Vargoil. Uh, great name, by the way. He uh, comes in with, to get the Fury Cells, Fury Cells, which Scrozzle stole from him, that he stole from Scrozzle. Uh, turns out he was an early creation of, uh, of uh, Scrozzle's. And uh, he's got a really cool d design and look to him. He's got these like three eyes on one side, if I remember correctly. And um, he's a little tiny, uh, slender build. But other than that, um, he's got these kind of like long braids. Uh, if I remember correctly, like a dark blue, red, and silver. Kind of a really, really good look. Um, but basically, Evox says, you know, if you can prove yourself, I'll give you the upgrade. Even though, again, Blaze and Roxy, and mainly Roxy, uh, did all the work as far as collecting them. But, um, but Evox has spoken. Uh, Ravi ends up owing up to his friends. They're, of course, very supportive um, as far as what he did to turn off uh, Smash. And uh, we find out a cloaked figure is now stealing some more effects. And uh, it's obviously Vargoyle, and he is uh, playing down his abilities, kind of playing a little possum here for everybody, and uh, Giga Drone is sent on at the same time, the Red Ranger is sent to deal with it, and um, uh, we have the yellow, blue, silver uh, are left to deal with Vargoyle, uh, Nate is at the uh, back at HQ uh, trying to fix Smash, so that the, um, because we don't have Smash, they can't do the Megazord, um, so that is one good thing that did come of this for the for the bad guys at least, uh, although not by their design. Um, Zoe ends up having to leave to give him air support uh, because the wind aspect of the of the monster he's like flying above 
not uh, not able to take care of that. So um, Nate does end up resetting Smash, and Ravi does leave uh, to help Devin and Zoe as well. So it's just Steel and Vargoyle that we're down to, and uh, Vargoyle decides, now that it's one on one, it's time to stop playing possum and show you what I'm really about. Um, the Red Ranger ends up with there was a really cool sequence where I, I don't know why they didn't. Uh, I don't think they've ever done this earlier, but I like the, the cooperative nature of it. He's, like, running at Smash, and Smash, like, he jumps on the Smash's feet, and Smash launches him up into the air so that he can strike the, the Zord. Really cool um, done there. Uh, but, uh, you know, Giga Drone is out and taken care of. Uh, Nate ends up showing up to help Silver at the last second before Vargoyle can defeat him, and he dips out. You know, he's like, I got my Morphex. I'm out. He is... Uh, Evox says he is impressed with all the Morphex and gives Vargoil the upgrade. Uh, we do find out that uh, these powers will need to recharge, so we'll need additional Morphex. This is just like a, a Ponzi scheme. We need to keep collecting Morphex so we can use our Monster of the Week. We need to collect Morphex to power up this upgrade. We need to collect Morphex to uh, upgrade Evox. They, they need a lot of Morphex. But um, the Rangers are cleaning the wall. Ravi apologizes to Smash and Smash actually tells him that he knew about his hobby all along and he would never rattle him out to his mother. Um, but I just think it's interesting that Vargoyle just immediately shows up and Evox just like, yeah, you did good once. You're, you're, you're in. You're, you're the chosen one now. Um, but it is what it is. And uh, Turbotron, for the rating, again, we, uh, we do five categories that we look at here for rating the Ranger, or for the Monster of the Week. Um, it's the design or look of the monster, the plan, the powers that it has, the success, and the voice. Uh, it's one to five for each of those categories. The best monster ever would have 25 out of 25. The worst would have five. Um, and so let's see where Turbotron ranks. For the look, I gave it a five. I thought it was excellent design. Uh, very sleek, white look. Uh, he's a little bulky, but uh, he kind of looks like a Gundam in some respects. Uh, but I uh, really, really enjoyed the look. Uh, especially for something which was probably based on, again, a fan uh, originally. And uh, for the plan, I gave it a 2. It's very standard. You know, we're going to steal a B-spot. This this episode is not about the bad guys this or the monster. It's about Ravi and his dy dynamics. And so it's not terrible. It's just kind of they don't go into it at all. We're stealing a B-spot, and here we are. We just showed up. So 2 for the, for the plan of the week. For the powers, I gave it a 3. Um, he's, he's got the turbo or the turbine that he's using to push and suck. So a unique uh, way of implementing this everyday item that we would have into a monster. So a three, I would have liked to see a little bit more out of it. But part of the reason we don't see more is because he's defeated so quickly. I gave a success for the success a one. He's defeated by one ranger essentially and just his blaster. Not much is needed to take this guy out. And so, um, and he didn't do anything. So, uh, success one, voice four. Um, it was a very deep uh, voice, just nice. It had a very, like, regal command uh, to, I mean, maybe regal is not the correct word. It had very command uh, leadership quality to it. Drill sergeanty in some respects. Um, at least that's kind of the vibe I got. But overall, again, look five, plan two, powers three, success one, and voice four for a total of 15 an average monster, essentially, uh, that you would typically expect on any given week of any Power Rangers episode. It's unfortunate because the look is so great, but, you know, they can't all be winners. And uh, that's pretty much the review. Uh, thank you for, for checking out this, this episode. Comment below if you um, like the fact that Roy Goyle got the the upgrade, even though he just showed up, or if you thought that uh, Roxy or Blaze should have gotten it, and uh, your thoughts on our rating for Turbotron. Thank you again for checking out a podcast named Tim. We'll have more Beast Morpher, Mighty Morphin Power Ranger reviews, and Star Wars stuff as well. So keep checking out the channel, and we'll see you next time on a podcast named Tim.